Well, hello again, America. It's the uh, Blue Collar Millennial here. So, uh, Happy New Year's, everybody. Happy uh, 2018. Hope y'all are having a good day. Hope y'all had a great holiday. Spent some time with your families, all that other stuff. No, I did. Uh, spending New Year's Day going out and looking at some of my projects. So, um, you know, I uh, started to reflect. Uh, thank y'all for uh, looking at the last video. Got a lot of good comments on there. Uh, answer a few questions that some people posted on there. Um, uh, first off, to the person that asked what my uh, background is, uh, I grew up on the uh, I-50 corridor in Kansas. My family owned storage facilities for grain and fiber crops and animal and uh, beef and pork that were grown and processing milling contracts with the uh, big uh, agricultural processors. You know, we'd mill down and then Cargill would take the millings and turn it into hundreds of products you saw at grocery stores. We catered you know, to farmers in storage and processing, or storage and milling, not processing. Sorry about that, y'all. Uh, so that's my background, um, where I grew up, and then, you know, uh, went to junior college, went into construction management, found a contractor that hired me on, managed products, went, you know, from all the stages, uh, sub foreman, foreman, uh, project manager, uh, and then, you know, associate superintendent, and then project superintendent, finally. So, um, want to talk today though um uh the big thing you know last time i went on a little rant so i'm gonna call this video how to win the american dream 2018 edition uh, i want to do a quick little crash course of what i call education for the new age uh stuff they don't teach you in k-12 through for college um so lesson number one in the uh rules to win in america 2018 edition life ain't fair get used to it I said it ain't right there for a very good reason. It makes me appear dull and uneducated. People are going to think I'm dumb because I use that. Another example, life ain't fair. Uh, lesson number two. The world will pay you what it thinks you are worth. The world will compensate you what it thinks the value of your input is. And that is in terms of monetary and distinguishment, in terms of a lot of different things. Uh... You know, I stopped at lunch earlier. No disrespect to the kid, you know, 19, 20 year old kid that was running the drive through. Very efficient, you know. Uh, I, I honestly think that people on the Chick fil A drive through do a better job than Congress most of the time. But the 19 year old kid that was out there taking orders and keeping everything straight, going the two lanes and emerging into one, uh, he's doing a great job. He is not going to be compensated as well, though, as the pilot that took me home for Christmas break on the jet airline I flew on. Uh, I don't know what all it takes to become a pilot. I know it's a arduous multi-year process. I know they get compensated very well for what they do, get very great benefits packages, all that other stuff. You know, it takes a lot of work to become one, I'm assuming, you know, just from what little I've learned working on airport projects. And uh, that kind of goes the same way, you know, as an analogy for the rest of life, is that... Uh, the, based on your skill set, the world will pay you and the world will compensate you with other things based on what it thinks your skill set is. Drew Brees can command $25 million for throwing a football. I think that's what he gets paid every year. I'm not completely for sure. I'm a big fan of the guy, but, um, you know, um, <clears throat> because not everybody can throw, very few people can throw a football as well as Drew Brees. I mean, the way he can look at a defense, read coverage, find guys open. I think he's the only quarterback in NFL history to have like five seasons over 5,000 passing yards. He's going to own the records, but uh, by the time he retires, that's just a good example. Um, you know, I grew up, played high school, you know, can throw a football you you give me an hour you could probably teach somebody how to throw a football with the laces put a spiral on it and everything none of us throw a football as well as drew Brees. there's a reason he gets 25 million dollars because he's only about one of four or five guys in america that can throw a football that well similarly you're going to get paid a lot better if you have a skill set that sets you apart i like to think that my company takes very good care of me and offers me great benefits because i have a skill set lesson number three do not, do not confuse education and distinguished awards with intelligence and with experience. When I was uh, in high school, seven, I was 17 at the time, 
And I really didn't know what I wanted to do with life. You know, I enjoyed working, you know, helping out dad, granddad, my family, you know, with the, at the grain elevators, at the millers, everything. It was a lot of fun, good area to grow up, learned a lot of practical knowledge, and just how stuff works, how to get stuff done. I remember, though, like most high school kids and high school seniors, I had no clue what I wanted to do with my life. And I remember uh, we had one teacher, she came from uh, Wichita, and she was only out there for a couple of years at our county high school. And I went to a fairly small high school, you know, it, there were less than, I knew first name basis everybody I went to school with, there were less than 200 of us in the whole, you know, high school. K through 12 were all on one campus in three different buildings. And I remember uh, she was telling me, you know, I was a B average student and everything, pretty good at math. I liked math, you know, A, A minus student there, C, C, C plus student on my best day in English, B's, you know, B, B minus pretty well everything else. But I just remember telling her, uh, I said, you know, uh, Missy, I don't really know what I want to do with life. I said, you know, um, I know I don't want to be stuck in a cubicle staring at a computer for the rest of my life, but I really don't know what I want to do. I don't know if I want to, you know, uh, work for an old man. I don't know if I want to take over his business. I don't know if I want to try and go out into the world. Don't know if I want to weigh, you know, serving in some capacity. I probably wasn't going to do that, but I did go meet with a recruiter at some point. So thank all of y'all that do serve our country, though. It's a tremendous sacrifice, especially those of you away from your family for the, for, uh, the holidays. Uh, and I said, you know, I think I'm just going to go up the road to uh, Butler Community College and, uh, or Butler Junior College, sorry. Yeah, call it community college. I'm a terrible person. I said, I think I'm just going to, you know, take some classes there, development, you know, spend a couple of years up there, see how life goes. You know, and uh, her response is always something that got me. It was, uh, you know, hey, you're too smart to go to junior college. Uh, not sure what she meant by that. I was not the greatest student. And even if I was, when did we start putting an intelligence level on careers and on development choices. I didn't know what I wanted to do and I didn't want to waste, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars of my money or, you know, I was lucky enough to have parents that were, you know, uh, willing to help me out with uh, college. I didn't want to waste their money either for, you know, going there and trying to find myself. That didn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, so despite a lot of objections from multiple people, which did include some members of my own family. I just said, you know what? I'm going to go to junior college, take a few classes, find out what I want to do, F probably find a company I could work for part-time. Ended up stocking uh, shelves at a grocery store when I was in uh, junior college. And I uh, actually learned a lot from that. Learned how to suck it up and deal with life when things don't go your way. Number four, good choices need to be made forward thinking. And uh, the reason I say this is because uh, one thing that I accuse my millennial generation of is, uh, you know, the pie in the sky of always having your head in the clouds. You know, as Yoda speaks, you know, Yoda speak, Empire Strikes Back, you know, always looking to the future to adventure, never on where they were, what they were doing. The choices you make today have a big impact on tomorrow. Um, you know, I did see a bright spot of news for uh, my millennial generation is that those of us that do have uh, employer employee sponsored retirement plans at work, two thirds of us are taking advantage of those, which um, I think is uh, great news. It's a sign that things are getting better. And uh, yeah, I just leave it at that, that, you know, we got a long ways to go, but that's some good news. So uh, forward thinking, planning for your future, always very important. And uh, don't put it off. Like I say, your New Year's resolutions, probably try and keep them for more than 10 days. Uh, finally, and then this is the biggest one, lesson number five. I harp on this again. Follow opportunity. Don't follow what your passion says you should do. Uh, say that, big reason, mostly just because, you know, uh, a lot of times people just say, well, I want to do this. I love doing this. Um, you know, it's easier to find an opportunity that you love doing and follow that. I found that with, you know, general contracting. Didn't know a whole lot about it until I got into the industry. So wrap it up, America. Uh, 2018 edition. Five things you need to know. Life ain't fair. Uh, make good choices. Don't confuse education with experience. And plan for your future. And the world's going to pay you what it thinks you're worth. Thank you all. Have a great day. Leave your comments down in the section below. And uh, God bless you all. Thanks. Bye.